Hello, good evening, and welcome to Kamla Television News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Our top stories in the news tonight. Former President Edgar Lungu's political advisor, Kaiser Zulu, bought a government vehicle without a paper trail. The PF cries foul over police move to summon speculators on Tutu Angulube's death. Zesco to spare key calendar events as load shedding takes off Thursday. The international news, U.S. seeks to re-establish trade and political ties with Africa. And in sports news, Morocco may become the first African nation to play a World Cup final. From time and memory, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Good news, good news. The rains have started. You need to plan your future. Generation wealth is the way to go. Has grafted avocado plants, fruiting within two to three years, for sale at only 90 kwacha each. And ordinary avocados at only 45 kwacha each. Contact us on 0979-753010 or 0962-965883. We are open from 8 hours to 17 hours, Monday to Friday, at Healing Word Ministries International in Ibex Hill, opposite Hilltop Hospital. Once again, another news in detail. The Anti-Corruption Commission, SEC, has arrested and charged the former Ministry of Agriculture Permanent Secretary Julius Joseph Shower for corrupt practices involving over 2.9 million U.S. dollars. Mr. Shower, 64, of Lilai Road, Lusaka, has been arrested and charged with one count of willful failure to comply with applicable law and procedure or guidelines relating to procurement contrary to the Anti-Corruption Act. Details of the offense are that between 1st January 2015 and 31st August 2018 in Lusaka, Mr. Shawa, being a person whose function concerned administration of public revenue, namely permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, jointly and whilst acting together with others, did willfully fail to follow applicable procedures in the manner he authorized the payment of 2.9 million US dollars from the Ministry of Agriculture account to Sinite Quarries account and approved payment to the said company without following laid down procedures as prescribed by law. SEC Head of Corporate Communications Timothy Mono says Mr. Shower has since been released on bond and will appear in court soon. A state witness has told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that former President Edgar Lungu's political advisor, Kaiza Zulu, was reported to have purchased a government vehicle after his tenure of office came to an end. However, there is no documentation record to show that he purchased the vehicle, the said vehicle. 
Crispin Walia, a senior transport officer at State House, has told Magistrate Mutinta Amwenya that in 2015, the government purchased a vehicle for the accused, but in 2019, when he left, he never handed it over. This is in a case in which Mr. Zulu is accused of concealing a government vehicle, Toyota Land Cruiser VX, contrary to the laws of Zambia. More in this report. The subordinate court Wednesday commenced with trial in a criminal offense that Kaiser Zulu, a businessman, is accused of concealing a government vehicle, Toyota Land Cruiser VX, with a stage presenting before Magistrate Mutinta Mwenya, two witnesses among them, a one Mr. Crispin Walia, a senior transport officer at State House. In his testimony, Mr. Walia has narrated before court that on the 6th of March 2015, a Toyota Land Cruiser GRZ was bought by the Ministry of Works and Supply and he was taxed to collect the said vehicle and attach it to the accused Mr. Zulu as his personal to order vehicle. The 52-year-old accused Mr. Zulu, who worked as a political advisor under the former Republican President Edgar Lungu, has been slapped with the charge of convention not amounting to theft an allegation contrary to Section 291 of the Penal Code, Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia. He has denied the allegations. As the state witness continued with his testimony, he testified that some time back in 2019, when the accused was about to leave, he was informed by the accused secretary in then that he had purchased the said GRZ vehicle, which was allocated to the accused during his tenure of office. However, there was no documentation records to confirm the same. In cross-examination, the witness has confirmed with the court that he has never reported to any police station that the accused Mr. Kaiser Zulu stole a government vehicle. Earlier, the first prosecution witness, Mr. David Musai, a garage owner where the said vehicle is alleged to have been taken for fixing, informed the court that he had made a verbal agreement with the accused to repair the said vehicle. In this case, the state alleges that Mr. Zulu, between the 19th of November 2019 and the 25th of March 2022, unlawfully and without claim of right, did convey to his use a motor vehicle, registration number GRZ 759. The accused was last week granted bail, however, still remains in custody. Sources have told Camnet TV that Mr. Zulu is still in custody for another offense. His case has been adjourned to a later date for trial. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Former Republican President Edgar Lungu's economic advisor, Hibene Mwinga, his wife and son have taken fresh pleas after the state added more charges and accused persons to the case they are alleged to have acquired property through corrupt means. The accused is jointly charged with his wife, Messi Musanje Mwinga, his son, Hagan Tumwinga, and Hichike Farm Limited, with 72 counts of being in possession of property, suspected to be proceeds of crime, valued at more than 41 million kwacha and more than 238,900 U.S. dollars cash. The commission said there were a total of 54 properties that had been linked to Mwinga, his wife, and his son that were reasonably suspected to have been acquired through proceeds of crime between 2015 and 2021. The properties include, among others, a house in Kingsland City, a double-story flat in Napsa Housing Complex in Ibex Hill, motor vehicles, and two properties in Chililabombwe. The matter has been adjourned to the 15th of December for trial. An assistant manager at the Road Transport and Safety Agency has told the Lusaka Magistrate Court that a total of 10 Haiga buses were discovered under the names of the former Deputy Inspector General of Police, Charity Katanga, when he checked their system. Shadrach Chozo was testifying in a case in which Ms. Katanga is charged with possession of property, reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime. After arresting Ms. Katanga, the Drug Enforcement Commission seized the 10 Haiga buses which, were, which she allegedly bought at 2 million and 30,000 United States dollars each using illegal funds and also cash in her company bank account in the sum of over 1.5 million kwacha. More in this report. Former Deputy Inspector General of Police Charity Katanga made a second appearance before the Lusaka's Magistrate Court in relation to corruption-related charges that the state slaps her with. 
The 45-year-old is charged with possession of property reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime. She recently pleaded not guilty before the Chief Resident Magistrate Davis Chimbwili. This morning, the 14th of December 2022, an assistant manager at Road Transport Safety Agency, Ratsa, Shadrick Njozo, has testified that in August 2022, the Drug Enforcement Commission visited their office requesting information for certain vehicles. He has told the court that when he logged into their system, the said vehicle numbers that he was given by the officers, he discovered that all the vehicles the officers were requesting information of were registered under their accused name, Miss Katanga. The said vehicles were Haiga Zambia Limited buses and 10 in total. Miss Katanga was arrested by the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, through its Anti-Money Laundering Investigation Unit in August 2022 for being in possession of property reasonably suspected to be proceeds of crime valued at over 2 million United States dollars and 1.5 million kwacha. The commission also seized the 10 Haiga buses which Ms. Katanga allegedly bought at 2 million and 30,000 United States dollars each using illegal funds and also cash in a company bank account in the sum of over 1.5 million kwacha. The allegations that the state has slapped her with is contrary to Section 71 of the Forfeiture and Process of Crime Act, number 19 of 2010, of the laws of Zambia. Her defense lawyers, however, have discredited the allegations against her. Trial continues in this case. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. Opposition Patriotic Front, PF, Information and Publicity Chairperson Rafael Nakachinda has charged that the statement recently issued by the Inspector General of Police, Lemi Kajoba, that the police will be summoning anyone questioning the demise of late former Kawe Central Member of Parliament, Tutu Angolobe, is a threat meant to intimidate the public. Speaking to journalists, Mr. Nakachinda says it is unfair for Mr. Kajoba to issue such a statement. He has challenged the Inspector General of Police to first summon local government and rural development minister Garin Kombo regarding the matter before summoning other stakeholders, adding that the minister spoke before on behalf of the president at the funeral and stated that Mr. Ngulube's death had more questions than answers. This IG never paid attention. Instead, they turned the complainant into a victim. They rent him in and victimized him. Now in his death, Kajowa wants to become a champion. Now in a wrong way, wanting to gag and silence voices of stakeholders, particularly those of us who have offered ourselves to save the Republic of Zambia as politicians, to provide checks and balances you know, against this government. The statement threatening individuals that are going to start summoning people to go and inquire. The advice we want to give for purposes of fairness, and if he's genuine about those inquiries, number one, he must Simon Misaka in the President of the Republic of Zambia. Number two, he must Simon Mr. Garin Kombo, Minister for Local Government and Rural Development. Then some of us can follow, because Garin Kombo came to the funeral in Kabwe, and he said he is coming to deliver a message on behalf of His Excellency the President to pay his condolences, Two, to also state officially that as a government, the death of Onobotutu and Gurube has left more questions than answers. Officials in the People's Assembly treated as though they have attending parliament at the invitation and pleasure of presiding officers. What happened yesterday is uncalled for, should not be tolerated. Zambia's power utility company, Zesco, has justified the six hours of load shedding scheduled to start on Thursday, 15th December 2022, while stating that important holidays will be spared. Addressing the media Wednesday afternoon, Zesco Managing Director Victor Mapani explains that the festive season beginning 23rd December 2022 to 1st January 2023 will not be load managed as well as the World Cup final slated for Sunday, the 18th of December 2022. Meanwhile, the Zesco Managing Director says the power utility company has cleared the 67,000 connectivity backlog that it had 
as of 31st December 2021. More in this report. Zambians are bracing themselves for days of darkness beginning 15th December 2022 as the whole country is expected to be load managed for six hours per day for the foreseeable future owing to reduced water levels at the Kariba Dam. Addressing the media Wednesday afternoon, ZESCO Managing Director Victor Mapani says the load management is necessary as any decision to ignore the low water levels could lead to a situation where the power utility is forced to switch off powers for longer periods of time in the future. Mr. Mapani, however, states that any positive changes will be communicated, further urging citizens to ensure that their houses are properly electrified to avoid any damage to property during the switching on and off of power during the process. The ZESCO MD has, however, reviewed that important holidays during the festive season will not be load managed. We want to do whatever it takes to ensure that we minimize any outages during that period. Um, we do know that it will be strenuous. We may have to borrow some water from next year. We can actually borrow some water from next year from Zambia's River Authority, which means we reduce our location a little bit, just to ensure that we cover this period. Maybe after that, then we can relax a bit and then start the actual management. So specifically on the two days, um, all things being equal, nobody should go off. <laughs> we, we, we have to we'll do whatever we can. To, even if it means we go off the following day after our World Cup, it's better we watch the World Cup. So what we can do is we can use part of the water to cover the World Cup and then come on the Monday, Tuesday, we save back some water so don't go off for a longer time. So that we are going to do. Um, so the World Cup and Christmas, New Year, I think we, we, we have to do what we have to do to ensure that uh, those days actually covered well. So it we need to be borrowing water for the following day or for the next two days to change from maybe two hours to three hours, but we make sure that, that Christmas and New Year are covered. That's what we're going to do. Meanwhile, Mr. Mapani says the power utility will continue exporting electricity to neighboring countries during peak hours. He also says the 67,000 connectivity backlog that stood as of 31st December 2021 has been cleared, stating that to date, a total of 75,000 connections have been done. So what type of power do we actually export? ZESCO exports power to specifically Namibia, Botswana, and the DRC. For Namibia, with a crisis in South Africa, Namibia literally lost half the load basically meaning they switch off their hospitals, they switch off their clinics, they switch off their schools. And so they came through at the early part of this year to request for an additional 80 megawatts. The original was 100 and they asked for 80 megawatts. Now, the 80 megawatts are basically lifeline, that's a lifeline uh, supply. What we have here right now, the way we are going to manage it, we don't need to stop the exports. We don't need to kill off the neighbors' economies. We don't need to do that. So pulling back, we could pull back. We could request them, for example, to step back, give us a 50 megawatts back from 180 maybe to 130. We go into snail, please, can you give us back a 20? They also start load management. That part also we are going to do. So we won't actually stop, but we can pull back some power to ensure that we do have adequate power to be sailing through. The, peak points. the ZESCO MD has further called on citizens to familiarize themselves with the load management timetables for their various areas while clarifying that these are simply a guide as they are subject to change based on various circumstances. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Minister of Labor and Social Security, Brenda Tambatamba, has revealed that Zambia has, of December 2021, recorded a decline in the unemployment rate in the country, standing at 17.4% from 19.9% in 2020. Speaking when launching the 2021 Labor Force Survey Wednesday, Mr. Matamba has also revealed that only 3.6 million Zambians are in formal and informal employment out of over 10 million citizens that are of working age. She states that the status quo highlights the need for urgent intervention measures, noting that the current administration has come up with a national action plan 
aimed at alleviating the situation. More in this report. Zambia is still one of the countries in the world with high unemployment levels. As 6.5 million people out of its employment population of over 10 million are not in any type of employment. Speaking when launching the 2021 Labor Force Survey and the National Productivity Report for 2019 and 2020, Minister of Labor and Social Security Brenda Tambatamba, however, notes that unemployment levels in the country slightly dropped in 2021 as they stood at 17.4 percent from 19.9 percent in 2020. She asks that the current administration's plan of using small medium enterprises SMEs may further help to reduce the high unemployment levels. The proportion of the youth not in employment, education or indeed training or what is abbreviated as needs. Simply put, the youth that are, either, that are neither in school nor in employment. Currently, 51.4% or 3,355,155,000 of the youth between the ages 15 and 35 in Zambia are not in employment, education or training. The new Dawn government has acknowledged the challenge achieving of achieving national development goals and seeks to leverage on this demographic divide by in investing in the current and future skills for the future for our youth. Ms. Tambatamba has also reviewed that the ministry has launched a computerized psychometric testing system which will help in making employment in government more transparent as it is a digital system that would choose candidates based on merit. When we talk about prudence in the management of resources, we are walking the talk through this computerized psychometric testing system. We are achieving coordinated positive growth in the delivery of public services and a reduction in government expenditure. Simply put, this is a cost-effective way of delivering government services to all parts of our country. Meanwhile, speaking at the same event, Zambia Federation of Employers President Mayra Ngoma says the education system needs to provide skills that are in line with market demands to reduce on high unemployment levels. So we have ended up with a skills development system that is not informed by the industry needs. Hence the training institutions releasing graduates who are not able to be taken on by industry. And if they are taken on, Industries have to do some retraining or reskilling in order for them to fit into it. It is important, therefore, that this matter is addressed by the coming up with a system that is collaborative, which must recognize the relevant stakeholders on the labor market. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security has also noted sectors such as tourism and finance as the most productive sectors in the past few years, while noting that those such as agriculture are the least productive, necessitating an action plan to enhance the productivity. Ziporam Shala, Kamet News, Lusaka. Young people led by the Young Men's Christian Association have demanded to be counted in the governance of the country in various sectors of the economy. Speaking during the commemoration of the Young Men's Christian Association of the annual National Youth Camp being observed under the theme Occupying My Space, youths acknowledged the need for capacity building to be able to take advantage of existing opportunities. Young Women Christian Association National Youth President Nora Chabu says young people are the majority in the country, hence it is critical that they are actively involved in national governance. Here's a report. The youth movement in Lusaka under the auspices of the Zambia Young Men Christian Association marched to raise their voices on the need for them to be counted in national development. The march passed in Lusaka's Baolini compound marks the Young Men's Christian Association's annual national youth camp focusing on four thematic areas such as climate change and youth leadership. Young Women Christian Association National Youth President Nora Chawu says the youth camp under the theme Occupying My Space 
also focuses on building active networks among young people for mutual benefits, providing knowledge support in generating youth-led sustainable solutions and addressing other social issues affecting the young people. We chose this theme specifically for young people. It's time we believe that young people should take up roles, young people should be in the driving seat. So at this youth camp we have specific area which is uh, uh, governance, uh, we're looking at leadership, innovation and technology, agriculture, climate change, because just from the theme itself, Occupy My Space, we want young people to take up roles in all sectors. The government has provided a platform through the decentralization policy, whereby development uh, and key decisions have been taken to the grassroots, where the, root, uh, the youths can take part regardless of uh, each and every place that they are in. So my interest uh, mostly is on the part of the ignorance point of view in most of our youths, which we want to try by all means to limit. Because you find that there's a lot of opportunities at the grassroots, at the ground, in a lot of uh, civil society organizations and the government institutions, but we are not fully utilizing them. For the youth, it's not just about seeking employment, but becoming employable. In this regard, Jackson Mongasa, who is visually impaired, says disability is not inability or incapability. So others, many people can't tell that I'm visually impaired because with the way I look. And I don't want people to look down upon persons with disability because the expectation of many, they think when a person is disabled, can't look good the way I can look or other, the way you can look. They are expecting a person with disability should look scruffy or dirty or begging in the street, of which that's not the point. Simply meaning disability is not an inability, no incapability. I am capable to do anything that able-bodied can do. It should take part in government making decisions and be leaders not only in the community but also at government levels because when youths are there to make decisions on behalf of fellow youths then we all benefit. So basically when we're looking at health, uh, my specific area is sexual health. Uh, it is very important for us as youths to take ownership of um, our sexual health and in the aspect we're looking at STIs, we're looking at HIV and AIDS, we're looking at early teenage pregnancies. We've noticed that in Zambia it's um, HIV and AIDS and teenage, pre teenage pregnancies are on a high. It is time for us as youths. Okay. It is us, it's time for us as youths to take ownership of that, educate ourselves. The young people stood up to have their voices heard and send a clear message that they are ready to actively engage in national matters on governance, entrepreneurship, climate change and health among other issues. Sharon Kalimbula, Comic News, Lusaka. This is Kamla Television News. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more news after the break. Your skin is the biggest muscle in your body. That's why we make sure that Oracle is number one when it comes to taking care of your precious skin. Oracle Pure Petroleum Jelly and Glycerin soothes, moisturizes and keeps your skin perfect. Oracle Pure Petroleum Products for that perfect skin. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. Housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans. All processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Kamnet Stars Football Club, popularly known as the local national team, is inviting all skillfully, gifted, talented and creative soccer players from across Zambia. 
ages between 16 and 20 must come, train and join the club. The category of these gifted footballers have the chance to go and market their talent in Europe and USA through Cabinet Stars Football Club, a team formed with a vision to produce quality international players. Please do not miss this brief open opportunity given to you. Cabinet Stars Football Club could be your gateway to your international soccer career. Venue, Kablonga Boys Secondary School Grounds, date 12th December 2022 to 21st January 2023. Time, 09 hours to 11 hours. Your time to shine is now. A Falcon, known for flying high speeds and mistakenly grace and flying incredible long distances. Falcon Express is equal to the task with your deliveries. Friendly and reliable, a company that cares for you. Local and international coverage, a company that empowers its customers on time, every time, all the time. Nationwide delivery. Send your parcels through Falcon Express to Mongu, Kabwe, Ndola, Kapiri, Kitwe, Chingola, Chipata, Livingstone, Mazaboka, Kasama, Solwezi, Kalumbila, Chirilabombwe, Luansha, Kalulushi. Get in touch with us on plus 260-971-130-766. And drop your parcels at Falcon Express. Falcon Express. Your parcels are safe with us. We we'll continue with the news. Lands and Natural Resources Minister Elijah Muchima has charged that he was misquoted following a statement he issued in Parliament recently on the, degazette, on the gazetting and degazetting of land on Karena and Forest Reserve Number 27. Addressing the media Wednesday, Mr. Muchima noted that land can be, can be gazetted according to law, such as when a growing population in an area needing expansion may require a change of land use by the president recommended by the minister responsible. He says the statement did not in any way suggest that the United Party for National Development will degazette forests or recharge areas as this would be going against an administration that has placed emphasis on preserving the environment. The minister has since advised all those he accused of championing the wrong narrative to read and understand what is required for land to be regazetted. Meanwhile, the minister has mentioned that the matter regarding Forest 27 is still on the table, waiting for the cabinet to decide the way forward. Forest can be, and I repeat, forest can be decazeted following what is in the Act on conditions that they are comparing reasons such as population. I said, Zambia population is now 20 million. They could be comparing reasons. Like a, that has established the township, CDB. Like in Mushidamu, where it's surrounded by the forest. Those could be the comparing reasons. Not long ago, I stated in my statement that Forest 27 would be recasted because it was very important was water recharge. Any head point for water was quite critical. I cannot go against the UPND policy. In terms of climate change, we are all aware what effects and impact it has on the general population. Even culturally where I come from myself, we don't cut trees anyhow. But I've heard outbursts from the general public that are declared that forests will be degazetted in order to accommodate deserving population. I have with me a verbatim 
from Parliament. I've just printed it. See it? I'll give you a copy. There is nowhere where I stated that this government is going to the Gazette Forest. Operation Young Vote OIV Executive Director Gess Nurenda says political administrations that have been known to perpetrate electoral injustice should be made to face the law to warn future would-be offenders. Reacting to the recent report from the Electoral Commission of Zambia ECZ 2021 election report, Mr. Nurenda says this report makes it clear that regimes such as the former ruling Patriotic Front misused the Public Order Act to block their political opponents from campaigning. The OIV executive director has cited the denying of access to then opposition United Party for National Development, UPND President Hagainde Hichlema, from entering Eastern Province for campaigns, stating that this was one of the electoral injustices witnessed during the previous administration. The abuse has not only gone, uh, I mean, has not only been by the police. Even uh, the ruling parties, we've seen that, uh, you know, in the past, uh, the ruling parties tend to uh, want to abuse the law, where they, uh, they say, okay, look, when the president is here, then uh, no one else should be around to campaign. I mean, that's a cake. You cannot, the president is just, but one individual. So why should the rest of the Zambians or the rest of the country become uh, stand still because then the president uh, is, is in the area? So that was abuse and that it really amounted to, to injustices. Uh, for example, also, we saw that the cadres, you know, uh, they tend to uh, cause mayhem, violence. And because that violence, uh, you know, people want to play safety first. And because people want to play safety first, uh, it means that they will not go uh, to a campaign rally, they will not go to a meeting, and that is basically injustice. Because people are unable to express themselves, people are unable to go for, for meetings and to be able to listen to other candidates. That was totally abused. But then what do we do just apart from uh, changing the laws? As civil society organizations, I think we need to really get together. We need to get together and ensure that these laws that inhibit a free uh, expression, these laws that inhibit a you know, free campaign by the opposition are really uh, gotten out of our statute. A consortium of civil society organizations, CSOs, has urged the Zambia Law Development Commission, ZLDC, to ensure that the Public Order Bill of 2022 is quickly presented to Parliament to see it being enacted into law. In a statement to Camden News on behalf of concerned CSOs, Governance Elections Advocacy Research Gears Programs Coordinator Gideon Musonda notes that despite various stakeholders having made their submissions on the bill and validation, validation being complete, Zambia Law Development Commission has disregarded the set timelines in which to hand over the bill to the Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security. Mr. Msonda notes that they expected the bill to have been handed over to Parliament during its current sitting, which is not the case. He has therefore advised that the bill should be expedited during the current administration as it has shown commitment to have this law reformed. Among the CSOs he was representing is the Chapter 1 Foundation, the Foundation for Democratic Process, and the Christian Churches Monitoring Group, CCMG, among others. We therefore reiterate our call to Zambia Law Development Commission to hand over the bill to the Minister of Home Affairs and on the... And call on the executive to expedite this process so that the bill is tabled in parliament for deliberations and eventual enactment. We as stakeholders are eager to see our submissions from the national consultative and validation meetings returned in the bill to be presented to Minister of Home Affairs. This includes Increased threshold of uh, a gathering requiring police notification to 100. Appeals to uh, the High Court as an independent body as opposed to the Minister 
who may be interested party and therefore subjective. Provision of the right and freedom to spontaneous gathering, which is not guaranteed in the existing act. A reduced notification period from five to three days, among others. We have continued to note the president's expressed desire to reform the archaic laws that still sit in our statute books through his recent pronouncements. We therefore urge Zambia Law Development Commission and the sponsoring Minister of Home Affairs to take advantage of this political will by expeditiously moving the process forward. The Basel Institute of Governance says the stance taken by Zambia to fight corruption is worth supporting. Basel Institute of Governance President Peter Mora said Zambia, through its Anti-Corruption Commission, has shown commitment to fight the vice. The Basel Institute of Governance held a meeting with the Anti-Corruption Commission Board Chairperson Musa Mwenye, State Council, on the sidelines of the 2022 International Anti-Corruption Conference in Washington, D.C., United States of America. Mr. Mora said there is no doubt that Zambia needs to be supported for showing willingness to fight corruption and protect public resources. And Mr. Mwenye said the meeting was productive and highlighted key areas of asset recovery. And I'm uh, very encouraged by the determination and uh, also the recognition of the complexity that I saw from the chairman. And we are certainly very enthusiastic to continue to cooperate and to strengthen this cooperation. Against corruption must of necessity include uh, closing all the loopholes where those who abuse their trust and steal from the Zambian people can hide assets. And this is the true of all jurisdictions. And so the Basel Institute is, uh, is the key in uh, uh, building our capacities and also helping us in asset tracing. So it was a wonderful meeting with the chairperson of the, of the Basel Institute. And I think our cooperation as Anti-Corruption Commission continues and it will strengthen with the Basel Institute. This is Kamla Television News. We'll take another break. We'll be back with international and sports news. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can take her a bit. Yes, my dear. Um, I was thinking of getting you a Bugatti huh? on your birthday. Really? Hi, I'm quiet. My name is Yana. Vanga uh. <laughs> Don't worry, man. <laughs> That's why there is insurance. Insurance? You've heard me. Not just any kind of insurance, but Savenda General Insurance, a company that offers superior customer service, highly professional and dedicated staff. We are not just any insurance company, but an insurance company that actually pays our claims. We cover, among others, fire, marine, aviation, engineering, agriculture, motor vehicle, and miscellaneous insurance. So, Live life to the full, knowing that Savenda General Insurance has got you covered. Savenda General Insurance. Insurance excellence. A Falcon, known for flying high speeds, unmistakably grace, and flying incredible long distances. Falcon Express is equal to the task with your deliveries. Friendly and reliable, a company that cares for you, local and international coverage company that empowers its customers on time every time all the time nationwide delivery send your parcels through falcon express to mongu kabwe ndola kapiri kitwe chingola chipata livingston mazaboka kasama solwezi kalumbila chilabongwe luansha kalulushi get in touch with us on Plus two six zero nine seven one one three zero seven six six and drop your parcels at Falcon Express. Falcon Express, your parcels are safe with us. Welcome back. And now in international news, Africa is a new terrain of strategic confrontation between the United States, China, and Russia. Washington is hosting a political and economic leaders from the African continent for three days in a summit with many facets 
and where some countries are treated with particular attention. Washington intends with this summit to regain the confidence of African leaders. Meanwhile, as the Democratic Republic of Congo government troops are fighting the M23 rebels in the eastern region of the country, another vigilante group by the name Patriotic Alliance for a Free and Independent Congo is also joining hands to further push the militia out of the region. For more in the international news, here are the stories. Africa is a new terrain of geostrategic political confrontation between the United States, China and Russia. Washington is hosting for three days political and economic leaders from the African continent in a summit with many facets and where some countries are treated with particular attention. The summit began on Tuesday and will end on Thursday. We are not going to be talking about Africa in going forward. We are going to be talking with Africans about the future of Africa, the future of African economies and societies, and the future of the world as peers. So on economic development, we know that uh, a lot is happening. There's a lot of ferment in, uh, in the air um, in Angola, and we want to be part of that growth story. We want to attract um, private capital, including U.S. capital, not just into the oil and gas sector, which is the traditional area in which there's been investment, but in telecommunications, in manufacturing, in, in pharmaceuticals, uh, agriculture, you name it. Um, and then on peace and security, we are privileged and very, very pleased to be partners with the Angolan government and the heads of state and foreign minister in helping bring peace uh, in, on a regional context. Uh, when it comes to the situation in the... Uh, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, received on Tuesday President Lorenzo, who reminded the U.S. administration of the ongoing change in Angola's foreign policy. Angola has given very clear signals that it is very interested in strengthening this cooperation with the United States of America. So, we have no doubt about our intentions of these very responsible steps that we are taking if we take into account the historical past of our relations. So there is a turning point that we can say is significant. Washington intends with this summit to regain the confidence of African leaders. President Biden's administration has mentioned a potential financial envelope of $55 billion to invest in the continent over the next three years. As the DR Congo government troops are fighting the M23 rebels in the eastern regions of the country, another vigilante group by the name Patriotic Alliance for a Free and Independent Congo is also joining hands to further push the militia out of the region. Located in the eastern region of DRC, the group is led by Walter Janvier Karairi. His mission is one, to thwart the M23 from advancing into the region. We spent a lot of time in the bush, and if we keep fighting, it's because our country is under attack. We have the objective to take our country out of the hands of aggressors. When they planned the balkanization, we were not happy, and if we left for the bush, it is because of this problem. The group has joined other armed forces in the Kishanga region of North Kivu to prevent the Tutsi-led M23 from occupying the region. They believe it is their duty to prevent further bloodshed. We are not with them on the ground. We are alone. Their access that the armed forces of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the country's main army, have liberated. You can see that the enemy has accelerated with speed. There are other forces, like these colonels and officials, who betrayed the army, and we had to intervene to stop the bleeding. Accompanying the veteran warrior was Heritier Ndagendage, who is a spokesperson to the group. We work with them because they accept that the country cannot be balkanized, that we cannot cede even a single centimeter of our republic. On the other hand, all others who work with the enemy, the allies of the enemy, are our enemies too. We do not work with all armed groups. Kinshasa is accusing neighboring Rwanda of backing the rebels, who now lie around 20 kilometers north of Goma and have made gains further west towards Masisi territory, Kareri's stronghold. We now have some sports news.
BBC Sport reports that Morocco's coach Walid Ragragui already knows what it feels like to win a trophy on Qatari soil and to receive a cup from FIFA President Gianni Infantino. And the big question this week is whether he can achieve both again on Sunday. A suggestion that would have provoked ridicule before the World Cup has become an ever narrowing possibility after Ragragui stunningly steered the Atlas Lions to the last four having already won domestic and continental club titles this year. If the 47-year-old is to lead an African and Arab side to a first World Cup final, then he will have to knock out the country where he grew up and played nearly all his club career. This is fortunate as Ragragui will face defending champions France on Wednesday, just three months after his first game in charge of Morocco. Owing to inspirational man management and a bond with his players that is close yet strict and trustworthy, the former international has modeled a talented squad to pull in the same direction. The sporting note brings us to the end of our kind of television news, but before we go to the headlines once again. Former President Edgar Lungu's political advisor Kaiza Zulu bought a government vehicle without a paper trail. The PF cries foul over police move to summon speculators on Tutuan Gulube's death. Zesco to spare key calendar events as load shedding takes off Thursday. In international news, U.S. seeks to re-establish trade and political ties with Africa. And in sports news, Morocco may become the first African nation to play a World Cup final. Our cabinet, our cabinet verse of the day is coming from the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. Thank you once again for watching Camera Television News. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Good night.